Hey everybody and welcome to this Festival Pro tutorial video. Today we're going to go over form basics. Uh, we're going to take it right back to the beginning and just have a look at how we set up forms, um, what the form settings do and yeah just some of the various elements and parts of utilizing forms in Festival Pro. To begin with I'm going to log into the organizer view and under dashboard and forms we can find all of our default forms that we have within the platform. If you want to create a new form you'll have to log out and go into your config and in here we can see at the bottom add new form. Now, when you create a new form, um, we'll just call this one new form. You can choose the page design. <laughs> you can choose access options, payment options, and on completion. And we'll come to these um, momentarily. But when you do create your new form, you'll find it automatically generates with first name, last name, and email address, which are primary contact fields. As in, if somebody fills this form in and these fields get filled in, they'll become a contact um, within your system. Whilst you're in config login, this is also the place you can copy forms. Quite useful to use our default ones that have already been set up and copy them over um, and make your own ones if you so wish to play around and tinker. And now if we go to our forms list. We can see here's our copy and here's our new form that we made. I'm just going to log out and log back into Organizer View and we'll have a little look at some of the form settings. So we come under Forms and we get a nice little settings button here in blue. And when we click this and go to the settings tab at the top, you're going to get the main settings for this form. Now you'll recognize this from when we uh, created our new form a moment ago. Quite simply, this is the, the name of the form. The dates is open between. Um, you'll see a big red closed sign at the top here if uh, you go beyond this date. This is the page design or template that you're using. Access options allows us to define who can complete this form. Public outside world. This is for people who are first interacting with your system, say band or vendor application forms, volunteer application forms, things like that. Once they're in your system as a contact, it's good to use auto login links. These allow um, your... Under access options, we have the settings for who can complete the form. Public and outside world, this is like an application form for a band or a, a vendor. It's the first time people are interacting with your system. Um, as we showed you creating a new form, uh, once people fill in those primary contact fields, then there will be a contact within your platform. And then you can start sending them auto login links. For example, uh, an artist, you may send them their artist advance sheet. Um, and that would be a secondary form because you want to store that information against, against them. You've got single form per organization. This would allow, um, say, the um, advance that you're sending out to be filled in just once by any member of that organization. Or perhaps you want every band member to submit their own um, their own form. And therefore, if you've got a, a, a company or an artist with subcontacts, you could send this one out and they'd be able to fill in one uh, per contact. The next set of access levels relate to who can come into this form and either see the registrations on the form or come and edit these settings that we're looking at now. And we can see here our system user types, artist liaison, config, organizer. And you normally want to kind of limit the form settings just to you know your organizers and your and, and your config. Depends on the form though. You might have a sponsor form and your sponsor manager you allow them to come in here if they're experienced with the platform. 
And to view the registrations on the form again, we can also also limit this down to who gets to see what. The next section we see is payment options. This needs to be enabled if you are taking payments or generating any tickets. This could be free tickets, but if you're generating any kind of e-tickets or taking payments, we need to switch this on to yes. And there's ticket reselling options. Um, you can find out more information about this in the uh, ticketing videos, but in, in short, if you want your customer to be able to resell um, some of these tickets, you can flip this to yes, and you'll be able to select that in the field options. Deposit payments enabled. Again, would you like to set any of these uh, fields to be able to take deposit payments? And you can force an item purchase as well. You can't complete the form unless you're purchasing an item. Down below that, you're going to see some tax options. You can hide the tax and have the price uh, plus or minus the tax. This invoice section depends on what happens um, you know, after the form has been completed. You can either uh, take payment uh, via Stripe and the invoice is sent. You can not take any payment and uh, send them an invoice. Payment taken, invoice sent to admin. Um, there's no option to pay on this form. Upon completion, the admin will be sent the deposit confirmation email with the invoice, but the customer will not get an email or an invoice, and their booking will be set to deposit. And payment optional invoice sent. This is going to give them the option at the end of um, your form to either pay via Stripe or to have an invoice sent to them. Um, the most common options are usually payment optional or payment taken. Underneath that we're going to get the access to their account section. Here we can choose to give people um, ticketing access. Um, this allows them to you know, log back in with their details uh, when they get sent their tickets to pay off anything and uh, you know, do ambassador rewards. And invoice access if this is someone that um, is being charged perhaps an invoice that they need to log in and pay. And finally on completion here we can determine whether we're going to send the tickets out at the time or if we're going to hold them till later. So we may want to send the tickets to the main booker with all tickets, maybe to the individuals or subcontacts, or perhaps we want to send no uh, confirmation email and tickets at this point. You can choose these and if you wish to maybe send say the confirmation email to the main booker without any tickets at the time, you can always then flip this over at a later date hit resend confirmation email under your registrations list and you'll be able to send this out. The final setting is tags for registrants. Now this is going to pop up this window which is the same schedule window that we often see when we're working with artists and contractors um, in different sections of your system. And in here we can actually say everyone who fills in this form will automatically be tagged with a certain profile field. So perhaps we want everyone to, who uh, fills in this form is automatically going to get two, two press tickets. Or perhaps it's uh, an application form for your volunteers and you know you're accepting everybody. In which case we can say everyone who comes through this form is a confirmed volunteer. And this is a really useful way to be able to utilize these forms um, in your workflow. As we set these forms up, and we can see here on page one, we are split into a couple of different sections. We've got the top page text up here. This is the information that um, you will see. And we go to the form here at the top. <clears throat> so anything here will pull in from this section here. And we can see that there's already uh, a bunch of mail mergers in this one, pulling from different uh, profile fields. And uh, if every field in the platform is kind of in here for you to pull from. You can also choose a different template, if you so wish, from your, from your uh, email templates. And underneath are all of our fields. There will be another video where we go more into detail on what each individual field does. But for now, we just need to be able to see how we add a new field at the bottom. And perhaps we want to add a new question 
um, in the text box. And we would like to know what shoe size are you? And we could add a description with this if we wanted to. So also, uh, if we wanted to, we could add tickets, different field options. We can just save this. And here's our new question. You can move these uh, questions up and down the fields and reposition them where you like. To add a new page to your form, we quite simply click Add Page at the top. And then we have to create a first field for this second page. So we can say, how many shoes do you own? Zero to 10. We can save this. And now we can see we've got a second page. Second page with a new blank top text for us to fill in. And our one new field in here. When somebody's made it through your entire form, your on completion will be triggered. Depending on what you're setting your tickets for. You can also lock the form to stop people coming back in and maybe receive an email notification when they complete it. And your customer will see this completion page. In this case, it's uh, the Artist Advance. We're saying thank you for completing the Artist Advance form. And then next to that is the confirmation email. This confirmation email, um, evidently it needs something in here to send out any tickets. So if you are sending a form out that's got tickets attached to it, um, make sure you do send them a confirmation email if you want them to get tickets attached. If you have deposits enabled, there is also a different section that you can fill in for your deposit confirmation email. Because often you may wish to give different information to these people. Now on this form, we don't have any cost fields. As a result, you can see my next tab here is stats. However, if I go to, say, our vendor contract, which is a form that has been set up for payments, we can now see that for stats, I have got a discounts field. Now you are going to see that the, a payment form and a non-payment form just have a couple of different options. On a payment form, you can set up discounts quite easily in here. You would just choose the item that you wish to give a discount to, give it a promotion code. You can choose whether you're going to give money off the total amount or a percentage off for free. And say how many of these are you know, going to be out in the wild and what dates they'll be valid between. On a payment form, you can also set up ambassador rewards. And again, anything on your form that you wish to then also give people one of those for free. You can set this up in here and we can say, well, you're going to get a free or a money off this item if you manage to sell six of them to your friends. And you can look up the uh, ticketing videos on um, ambassador rewards for a bit more detailed information on that. You can get to the stats tab here and again this will give you weekly breakdowns and daily sales breakdowns and uh, a bunch of other information. We can search any forms results and in here we can search either via the profile fields that we have or indeed by the form options on this form. So perhaps we want to find everybody who has got greater than one extra adult ticket. I can do a search here and we've got two vendors who have filled in this form and asked for uh, one or more extra adult tickets. We could also run a search that encounters profile fields. So perhaps we want to look at all of our confirmed vendors who have filled in this form. Here we go, we've got four there. The last section to look at, and quite important section, is the registrations of your form. Now, if we go back to our list and um, we can quickly sort by registrations, we can see here, this is the number of people who have returned your form. So 74 here, 62, 15, and we can kind of click on registrations here, or we can get to it via the settings and registrations button. 
and here we can see everybody who has filled in said form. Now we can view these forms by clicking on view <coughs> and we can see here everything that they've um, they've returned. So there are comedy acts with five people who come from Brighton. But sometimes going through and viewing all of these can take a little while so you can customize this screen using the add columns button and this just allows us to um, you know choose what we what we're going to see on this screen um, so this is an application form let's say we want to review them quite quickly we don't want to click on view and see each individual we just want to see the Spotify and type of act that they are and here we go we haven't really got anybody who's given us their Spotify but you can see the columns come up here and this allows us now to kind of view straight in here and we could come in and just start confirming straight from the registration screen certain acts that we uh, have agreed to confirm perhaps. There's different tabs along here that allow you to see either all of your registrations, completed registrations, um, deposits, these aren't going to matter on this because this is not a cost form, but um, you also get to see incomplete forms. Now these are people that have maybe started to fill in your form and uh, they got past the first page or uh, the first few sections and then they didn't uh, submit. So that just allows you to kind of chase people up if you so need to. Now if we change this form to a payments form and go back to our registrations page, we're now going to see that these tabs have changed. So now we're able to see everyone who's paid or deposit, the people who are you know, have got a deposit, unpaid people, refunded people, um, so on and so forth. So there is the option to flip that around um, and see these things when you are in payment view. So it's just worth noting that you may see different tabs here, um, depending on if you are taking payments or if you are not. So I hope this video has given you a good starting point to understand a little bit more about how forms work within Festival Pro. The next steps would be to look at auto login links and also what the different field options are. And we'll do another video that goes into more detail on those very soon. Thank you.